It was about a year ago when we made a video about the Aperture LS600D Pro. And since then, it has been a staple on pretty much every set I've been a part of. We are constantly using the 600D on set because it's bright, the color is gorgeous, it's built like a tank, it's a real industry workhorse. I've been seeing the 600D Pro on real sets all over the place. And it's incredible to see how Aperture has completely changed the industry for better. Before, you'd have to use HMIs. HMIs are still super important, but in many cases, you can get away with a 600D Pro. And I'm very excited for the 1200D that they announced. I will be buying a couple of those. Full disclosure, Aperture gave us this light. They give us stuff once in a while. Um, not because we are, you know, have to say good things about them, but because we really, really, really like them. And I am an Aperture fanboy. I'll be the first to admit it. I love Aperture. I've been saying it for years. We are not getting paid for this review, however. Now, there's a couple things you need to know about the 600X Pro. It's more expensive than the 600D. It's not as bright as the 600D, but those things are okay because it has a superpower. It is variable. 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin. This thing can look super orange or super blue. Usually that's the range that I'm in when I'm going to gel a light. And keep in mind, when you put a gel in front of a light to change the color, you're halving the brightness. The light is going to be half as bright. Now, some people might say, eh, I don't know if I'm gonna buy this light. It's not bright enough for me. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's bright. It is extremely freaking bright. Oh my word, it's hot too. What's interesting here is there's actually a, a, a bunch of little uh, little lights in there that are, 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 you know, let me turn this off. <sighs> okay, they have a cool glass thing in front of the light emitting diode that perfectly blends the different colors together. So that way it looks like one source, one clean light source. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. Oh, there's like a texture to it. Did you hear that? Man, I'm gonna get roasted in the comments. I'm always abusing equipment and doing things with it that I shouldn't. There's reasons why I want a variable light. One, to match existing light sources, to match the sun, because when the sun gets lower and if I'm filming outside, I'm gonna wanna turn that light to be a little bit warmer. And then also if I'm lighting a scene, say indoors, and I want a warm sunlight coming through, I would use this light. In terms of uh, the body of the light fixture and the ballast, they haven't really changed all that much. Just like they did with the 300X, They've included this cool like hatch pattern, like a carbon fiber pattern on the body itself. I don't know if that's real carbon fiber or if it's just a pattern. Somebody out there in the comments, let me know. I don't care either way. Uh, it's strong, it's well-made. It looks a lot like the 600D, except it's a little bit more squarish. The ballast, same thing, just like the 600D ballast, except the top has this carbon fiber pattern. It's built like a tank. This is made to be used and abused put on the grip truck, thrown in the back of the car, and used for years to come. Or thrown off the roof of your house. Or we could throw it off the roof. No. Now I did have a gripe uh, against the 600D uh, for one reason. And the number one gripe was that this cable that goes from the light to the ballast was fairly short. This one, however, seven meters long because a lot of times with these lights, we're putting them way up and we want the ballast at the base of the stand so we can get to it. Much better this way. Again, just like all of their lights for a long time now, this thing has built-in lighting effects. You can get to it on the ballast. Uh, it does paparazzi and all these other cool modes, which I never use because I'm not weird. The menu on this ballast is very nice. And um, one thing I like is when I'm turning this very slowly, I can actually control the light in 
very small increments. Now, one thing that is interesting is if you want this thing to be fairly dim, it's hard to do. This is the dimmest the light can be. I wanna shine this light through the kitchen window and set up a little shot and see what this looks like being warm, you know, like a warm sunlight feel. Now, what we've done is we've placed the 600X outside and it's shining through a window. Come here. Now, what this light is doing is it's simulating the afternoon sun. We've placed this light at 4,000 Kelvin because to my eye, that seems about right. Now, I wanna film that scene again but have the light at 5,600 Kelvin. Now this is what a normal 600D would look like without a gel. So let me know, which one did you like more? Did you like the one with uh, at 4,000 Kelvin or the one with the 5,600 Kelvin? Just a reminder, when you're using a light like this, I would recommend using a combo stand. And this light gets much heavier and much more awkward to use when you put on the giant 150. Aperture came out with a new soft box. And I wanna show it to you right now here in the backyard because it's so big. I don't really have room for it inside right now. It's this the... <laughs> One of the biggest soft boxes I've ever seen. It's huge. What do you, what do you think of this? Oh, freak. Oh, hello. Okay, here's another problem I have with this thing. Aperture, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Figure out some way that these will actually fit together. See this problem here? That's a lack of fabric. If the fabric was a little bit longer, they need to be able to just go around to close this. Haha! <laughs> all the way around, 4.9 feet. This thing is massive. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Well, out in the sun like this, this light's not gonna do that much, but inside, this would fill up a whole space with soft light. And so next, we went back inside to see how soft the Aperture Light Dome 150 really is. We think this looks gorgeous, and we love how the light wraps around the face. Next, we kept the light in the same position and attached a regular light dome. You can see here that the lighting is still soft, but not as soft as before. Then we attached the Aperture Lantern, which we love and we use all the time. And you can see the result here. Here are the results from the three lighting modifiers. Let us know which one you think looks best, and let us know what is your favorite lighting modifier to use. I don't think this light is for everybody. For example, if, if you're budget conscious and you don't care about messing with gels, just use a 600D and gel it, right? If you're gonna be putting lights in hard to reach places where you can't gel them and you wanna be able to change the color temperature remotely, then buy the 600X. It's the brightest color variable light from Aperture right now. And for that reason, I'm excited to add it to our collection and use it on a daily basis. If you liked this video and you want to subscribe to our channel, please do not. We consider ourselves a channel in decline and we like it that way. If you do want to subscribe to a channel, subscribe to another YouTube channel about filmmaking. There's so many of them out there now. It's an oversaturated market, thus rendering Epic Light Media one in a million, basically.